Google Maps is a great tool to allow students to interactively explore new areas and um, tell stories. So I put together uh, four resources here. I'm just going to go through these four links real quick to explain them a little bit more. Um, the Google Earth Gallery. I linked to um, a category, category called Culture and History. So there are all these pre-made Google Maps. Um, this is crowdsourced, so if your class makes a really awesome Google Map, you can upload it. Um, pre-made, so you can go into these maps and explore the data on them. You know, like this is a new map over our current. So Google Earth Gallery would be the first place to start if you're looking for, to use Google Maps in the classroom. Uh, they're, you know, they're the most interactive map you can get. Pull down charts are out. Um, Google Lit Trips is the second big geography tool to use in a classroom. So what Google Lit Trips are, are they are a story on a map. I'm going to go into one of these. So if you go into number the stars, what this will do is it is a, a Google map. I download number the stars. It's going to ask me for my email address real quick. So with Google Lit Trips, it requires you to download Google Earth, which is a free download. And you can just Google that. I'm not going to go in depth on that, but Google Maps files are .kmz files. Um, you don't really need to know more than KMZ means Google Earth. So I'm going to go back to just a walk in London since it's really handy and open up a walk in London. So all I'm going to do is go to open. And on my downloads folder, I have this walk in London right here. So Google Lit Trips follows the story a walk in London. And if I click on one of these map points, You know, it's questions, discussions, all of that that go along with the book in order. So Google Lit Trips, uh, you can create them with your class or a lot of them have already been created. Uh, was kind of the first big interactive way that teachers were using Google Maps in their classroom. Like I said it requires Google Earth. I'm not going to show you a lot more on those because you can kind of search them yourself. But I'm going to not close Google Earth. I'm going to go back to Google Earth Math Walks. So this was inspired by Google Lit Trips, but what this is is our Google Map activities that teachers have made for different content areas. It started off with math. So if I go into this right here, uh, I'll just show you the example. I'm not going to download one. I'm going to open it in Google Earth, but it has you do real world world math problems, such as what is the um, circumference of this crop circle. Um, here you're timing trains on a map. So it uses aerial imagery. It has students doing actual projects using Google Maps, using actual aerial photography. It's a really great way to, to connect your geographic area to a different content area. It's super interesting. <clears throat> and the last thing that I linked on here is Google Maps Engine. Uh, and Google, the way that you create Google Maps has changed a little bit. I'm just going to click on create a new map. It's now called Google Maps Engine. That's the link I put in here. And this is how you can have your students do projects and attach them to a map. So let's say right here, I'm going to click on this to add a marker. So let's say that we were doing a tree study right here. So our students could each say, Woods studying X tree and discovered that we have a family of uh, bino squirrels. And hit save. You can also add photos, video to these map points. And so as a class, you could put together each student build one map point, and this would be a great product to have in the end to share with parents uh, or, or other peers. So that was kind of a, a really fast crash course about doing Google Maps, using Google Maps in the classroom. I'm going to stop recording because this is already too long, but check out the links on your own.